Hello and welcome back to the Chromecast at the Rising Moon. Hey, today I have a pick a card for you. It is an Archangel message about your career and money. Um, I may be clearing with a sound bowl in between. We're using the Animal Archangel uh, Oracle deck with every pile, but there are three piles to pick from. Take a moment, you're gonna have a moment here with the cards, see which deck calls out to you. That is the message that is meant for you in this reading. This is unlikely to be a reading where more than one pile will call out to you. Um, but if you feel called, feel free. So take a moment, see which deck stands out to you. That is the message that you're most meant to receive and I will see you at the time of your reading. Welcome back. If you chose pile number one, this is your reading. We're putting number one over there so that people can fast forward to their readings easily. I've just cleared with a root chakra sound bowl. Um, whenever you need to be in a very grounded space, particularly about something for your career, when it's an earthly matter, remember the root chakra sound helps ground you in this time and this place. And you can use the recordings on places like um, chakra vibra vibrations, um, healing vibrations, meditative mind, inner lotus music. Those are all very good channels. Let's get your animal archangel oracle to see which archangel is contributing on this particular read. Eagle, seize opportunity courageously. It's archangel, you got me, buck beep. <laughs> like I have no idea. Um, I work with the core four, which is um, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, Michael, and then of course Metatron as well. Um, seize opportunities courageously. Oh, you're going to have to have some confidence in yourself is what that looks like. All right, remember, the, from a strong foundation, you can build anything. That is one of the meanings of the eagle energy. Um, the eagle being one of the strongest birds of prey. And when you ever see, whenever you see a bird of prey in the sky, they're circling looking for prey on the ground. Not to, you're not a predator, it's just you have to seize the opportunities that come to you. Don't, don't talk yourself out of things is one of the meanings of that particular group. Here we go, let's get going here. What do we have for pile number one? This is the Starman Tarot. Um, it's a very large deck and it's a difficult shuffle. So for my fellow readers, be a little bit aware of that. Hey guys, before I get started, please don't forget to do things like hit that thumbs up button if you like the reading and subscribe because it helps my channel. If you want to book me for a private reading, there's a link to my website in the description box down below. That's the only way to book me. And I have a podcast called Logical Magic Examining Esoterica where I discuss all kinds of esoteric subjects and how to heal as well, both from trauma and then just basically how to build your confidence and step into your spiritual enlightenment. Let's get going with an infinity spread here. So the first card I have is the devil in reverse, yay. The devil in reverse is about like being in the healthy space, being in the connected space, having shed the burdens that don't serve you. The devil is about an attachment to something that is not good for you. Sometimes it's a relationship, sometimes it's a relationship to money. And that is something to look at in your ancestral healing is what was your family's relationship to money? How did they treat it? Did they treat it as a tool to fuel their lives? Or were they trying to hold it up like a shield to protect themselves from all forms of danger? And the problem with trying to treat money as something that will protect you is that it's only a component of protection. In an uncertain world, what you really have to do is be tapped into your guidance so that you will be able to see what is right for you. We have the Ten of Wands in the upright, which is a false sense of urgency. Um, if things haven't worked out yet, it's because it's not quite time. Don't overburden yourself. Don't try to do too much. It's not the recipe for success. Pushing real hard to get things done will just exhaust you and burn you out. Take your time with things. If one of these things is saying here that you might have a relationship to a tendency to overwork, and I see that in my collective all the time. I have a lot of Tauruses, but I also have a lot of healers, and I have a lot of teachers, and I have a lot of people who are supportive members in their communities, and sometimes they get their identity mixed up with what they do for a living, just that tiny little bit too much, and they overburden themselves. So that is one of the things you'll be stronger if you allow yourself adequate rest and don't 
remember, even if things haven't worked out yet, there's plenty of time for things to work out. If the wolf isn't at your door, don't keep using binoculars to see how far it is away. Know that things are coming to you when they're meant to. This comes out with the lovers in reverse, which is a card of watching your choices and being whole and integrated within. Um, this comes out with the Nine of Cups in the upright, which is, that is fantastic. That is a card of manifestation. That is the card of bounty. That is the card of having all and feeling kind of very satisfied with life. It is a card of satisfaction as well. So you are being reminded that you really, you have to keep yourself on a little bit of a leash if you have this tendency to overburdening yourself and being a little bit too focused on like material success. Understanding that truly, if things have been held back for you, like there's a loving presence behind that. Don't question it so much. They really always are on your side. And again, I'm not familiar with that particular archangel, but Metatron is in charge of the archangels who protect people who are trying to do good in this world. So that would be one of the legion, the legion of archangels who protect those who are simply trying to walk forward with integrity in this world. This comes out with the Seven of Pentacles in reverse. Now listen, that has two different meanings for me. In reverse, it can sometimes be um, a, fa a failure. I don't see it that way here. But I do think you have a fear of failure that like, if thing, <laughs> you have a really hard time accepting the idea that things will happen when they're meant to. And you try to push really hard sometimes because you're trying to, I think, build up your stamina. Um, remember that you will also simply be blocked on answers until it is the right time for you to have them when you get that devil in reverse. It means that you've had it in the upright at some point in your life, meaning that you have been, you've had a difficult relationship to relationships or to work or sometimes to family. It is one of the cards that marks being cleared of codependency. Once you have cleared any form of de dependency, which is when your identity gets wrapped up in something, an exterior relationship, you have to be, re you have to remind yourself that it's like you'll always be a little bit vulnerable to it but that awareness is the thing that will help you going forward. This is a card of like taking vacations and taking adequate rest as well, because the Seven of Pentacles in the upright is the toil and labor card. So this is what it is literally telling you, you've had a difficult relationship to overworking. And that as long as you are resting adequately, you will exist in this energy, but they will throw up a block as soon as you are pushing way too hard for your own good. With the Wheel of Fortune in the upright, that is another card that is, that's another 10. So we have 10, 10. They're both in the upright. That's beautiful. It's complete cycles. Um, I like that there. It's a good, it's a good karma card. Um, the Wheel of Fortune is one of the karmic cards. Please have more confidence in what you're trying to do. And again, if something hasn't come to you, no matter how much you've tried, ask yourself what I need to heal. But you're getting everything that you're hoping for soon. Six of Cups in reverse, which is a difficult relationship to the past sometimes, underlying issues about worth. And then it comes out with a Strength card in the upright, which is a great card to have there. That is about confidence and overcoming and healing and being guided by your better self. Um, this particular energy has the same energy as the magician with that infinity sign, which is the flow of life, the flow of energy, the flow of magic. Remember, always look at the cards to see what symbolism is there. We have the bear there, which bears nurture creativity. They love honey. Um, they are very good at knowing when they are supposed to rest because bears are some of the animals that actually hibernate. Remember, the lovers in reverse is about taking the, the dichotomy within, the disparate parts of ourselves, and making them whole and integrated. So it's about being in connection to your highest self. This particular Nine of Cups has a dove on it, which is about peace. It can be about reconciliation. Um, I just, I really like the energy on all these. I'm going to get our two oh, Prince of Wands in the upright, Ace of Cups in the upright. So pile number one. You, 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 you need this reminder on a regular basis because, like, no offense, but you appear to have a mindset that you will be hale and hearty and then you're supposed to work, 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 and you'll have all this success. And you have a very, very, very hard time trusting. Apparently, I've got somebody flipped, so I'm taking it out. Raphael, be relaxed and independent. The cat energy, Archangel Raphael. That is the energy that is most, most healers are attached to. Raphael is about divine love. 
Divine love has compassion. It is, it washes away all doubts, all fear. I looked over and it was kind of sticking out of the deck and I'm like, okay, you're in. Put me in coach. Um, I like that. Work on your heart space a little bit more than you do sometimes. When you start to be overly focused on business and overly focused on your progress, it is a call to work on your heart space. Um, I like this reading so much and there is almost like there's not a ton to say other than remember the pace of things is actually a little bit controlled by your attitude. Meaning that like when you're in a healthy and relaxed energy and you're like work is part of my life but it isn't my whole life, particularly people who work in healing professions, they can feel like a, a sense of obligation to their clients that is both healthy and unhealthy at once. So that's that inner dichotomy and finding the good balance. Remember that is an issue that comes from childhood for you. That if you think that you're always having to earn your place here or earn people's validation or approbation, look to your childhood, your formative experience to see what made you believe that. And again, examine a familial relationship to money because that is often one of the things that we are trying to shed. I know that like I had to do a ton of work to, send, uh, to shed an ancestral attachment. Um, one of my parents is from Scotland and they have some of the worst deprivation attachments on there. So it keeps people in a very lack mindset. No matter how much they have, they have a tendency to hoard it, thinking that they're always two steps away from losing everything. You, you have a lot of success coming to you according to this. New things will be happening. Um, do not take on too much, but you have multiple opportunities coming to you and they're coming soon. Like they're, they're trying to be part of this world as we speak. But you are going to be a little bit blocked on specifics because you hyper fixate. It's not, it's not an insult at all. Um, people have the devil in the upright have a form of compulsion. And it often involves uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, which comes in varying degrees. This looks like that you have struggled with workaholism. And so you aren't going to get, get hyper-specific details on your career because you're hyper-focused on them. You kind of can't help it. Like there's just a part of you that wants your fortress, that wants your fortress in this uncertain world. Remember, that comes from your family. Whenever you encounter like an energy, a thought process that is about, that it doesn't exist in a healthy work-life balance, it go back to like, mm, is that how my guy, not only was my mother from Scotland and like there's a bunch of misers energy over there. Um, my, one of my grandmothers, who's my primary care caretaker, um, grew up in the depression. My father was older than when, when I was born. And so my grandmother had been uh, a young woman in the depression. And my goodness, can you ever, could you ever tell? Like she had, <laughs> I come from people with a really sick relationship to money. And I have to always be aware of that, that like, you know, enough is enough and that things happen when they're meant to. Goals. <laughs> Progress is positive and personal goals will be achieved. This is a world. Be open to new possibilities in all areas of your life. File number one, this is a really, really positive energy. And I think that like, if there's a part of you that's like, tell me when, tell me when, please, tell me when. When you're healthy enough to be ready, that's what's coming to you. And it will come as soon as it humanly can. But if you have invoked particularly angelic protection or you have asked for divine protection in order to shed this darker energy, this like the part of your shadow self that held you back, then the, the only thing that speeds things up is adhering to a healing protocol, making sure you take really good care of yourself. I will tell you I'm not always I'm not much of a long haul reader. I prefer to read within like a year's window. Um, my sense is this this is like right around the corner for things starting to happen. The hourglass um, <laughs> fell out with like conviction, <laughs> serendipity. Um, we, we have a lot of cards here. I'm gonna put the rest of them back after this. Strength and wisdom, unseen forces watch over you, the golem, half the deck fell out. On the talisman, you are destined to succeed. I'm putting most of these back, but that the deck practically flew across the room as I was trying to shuffle it. Don't get your identity wrapped up in your success. 
You are not your job. Even if you are working in your purpose, which some of us do, not everybody does, but some of us do. Serendipity, bright new prospects are on the horizon. And the spirit, unseen forces watch over you. The dragon, strength and wisdom. Only you can control the tendency you have towards a fear-based need to work. And, you know, fear always holds us back. And you work with Raphael, which is divine love. The opposite energy of love is fear. Uh, you have more control over how things are going. It is all in your mindset, whether or not you're in a healthy energy. And try to, like, embrace the idea that being protected by archangels and being protected by very positive forces, very healing forces, is actually a great gift in this life. Even if it has held you back at different times. Even if it has held you back. Everything that you want is actually coming to you. And the thing that you need to hear is the hourglass time is of the essence. Everything wants to come to you right now. It's just that you kind of have to make sure that it's like I'm open to receive in a healthy manner. Because particularly when it comes to money in a world that is very focused on money, it, it, it stands on a ledge. There's so much risk with it because getting our identity wrapped up in it thinking that like an ever-increasing number is the thing that will make us happier and safer rather than being the thing that like drains your energy. If you get super focused on your bottom line, all that does is take up your energy in something that is meant to be... Money in your life is meant to buy the materials for the foundation of happiness, but it cannot constitute happiness itself. It honestly cannot. And I know that, like, you know, when they've even done studies, you know, can money buy happiness? Yes, to an extent. People with more money have a tendency to be happier because they're not afraid of things like getting sick and losing their home. But it does not buy resonant connection with your existence as a spiritual force as well as an earthly force. Money is there, as Ariana Plotten said this, and I will say it over and over again because I thought it was the perfect way to put this, is money is a tool, not the end goal. And whenever you get into the, you know, money, money, money energy, brakes will be slammed on because it's not good for you. But when you're in an energy of like, hey, I buy what I need, and like if I'm draining my savings at different points, I know it's because they're just, you know, just be glad they're there and that what I've lost will be returned to me. That I do not need to be frightened that like my life will be deprived going forward unless I work myself to a small nub. Particularly people who work in this profession, particularly people who give their energy to other people, we can give too much and deplete ourselves way too much. So it is an act of love, kindness, and what? Compassion. They will keep things from manifesting in order to make sure that you're still around. And there is one way to tell what, how healthy you are. It's like, how much do you look forward to the things outside of your work? How much do you want to participate in this world and connect with others? These are all good parameters for, like, how am I doing with my work-life balance? Ambition is great. Ambition is great when you feel very guided. No loving force would ever allow us to fritter away our energy at something that cannot return love to us. And that is the ultimate problem with looking at money as the bottom line. You have plenty coming to you. Ka-ching! Ka-ching! Where do we have? And we even on, we had the other one that was also the success card. But you have to remember that if you have a fear-based mindset around your bottom line, around your career, around your success, that you're like the reason that things might slow down is not because something does not love you. It is exactly the opposite. Something wants you to, and here's why they will slow things down. Like when you have enough, when you have a roof over your head, when you have enough food, when you have a place to bathe, when you have a place to sleep, and that might be like almost all you have. The reason that they will slow things down is because they're trying to make you exhaust that from anxious energy. If, every, if you push super, super hard and nothing happens, sooner or later, everybody is like, I, it's not making a difference. And it's not about giving up. It's about exhausting that compulsive energy around it. Because manifesting is about compelling and shaping the energy around us. 
But compulsion is about something that takes every ounce of our energy into one area of our lives and it pulls it off balance. So problem number one, what you kind of need to hear is like you are on the cusp. You are on like everything's about to happen. We've got this overnight success energy kind of with the manifesting energy as well. But be very careful with your choices and to remember every time Fear about your future rises up. It is talking to you about something that was instilled in you. Six of Cups in Reverse is a card about a difficult relationship from childhood or to childhood that you may have had. It, if you grew up without enough and like, you know, somebody who never worked and so you got the message that I should always work, I should never ever stop, it will be the only thing that keeps me safe. No, extremes in any area are not good meaning that they, if a loving force will slow you down, keep your life in balance, energetically balanced, listen to balancing recordings. Um, no matter what profession you're in, go ahead and ground in some capacity every day. And it does not have to be elaborate. It does not have to be an hour long walk where you go and hug a tree. What it needs to be is taking a moment to let the day go in a grounded fashion, literally letting it go into the earth. These are earthly concerns. And if you are in this collective, you are more concerned with your spiritual evolution and connecting to something that will show you your purpose. We have a difficult path is revealed, hold on just a moment, to conform is to die inside and then follow your vision. So the difficult path is revealed. There will be challenges. Ask for help and learn that we are all connected. To conform is to die inside, be brave and be yourself. Follow your vision. Never lose sight of what is really important. So here's the thing. Get the feeling that you have already been through the everything. That like it's your, I wouldn't say exhausted, but I do think that that's one of the ways that they got you to begin shedding a particular attachment. Was the, like there was a futile feeling with that seven of pentacles in reverse. The seven of pentacles in reverse has, is also one of the meanings for futility. Um, with that feeling of futility about your efforts, like you finally had to stop hurting yourself. So they will throw up these roadblocks and they will slow things down. And when, when things start happening, be careful, be careful because like it's starting, it's going to be very soon that they're going to do a test area of like, how much is this person willing to stick to being healthy? Because if you suddenly got opportunities coming at you from every single direction, the only thing that will keep you safe are your choices. If you are prone to overwork, if you are prone to exhausting yourself, and by the way, if you're not, this is not your pile because we've got it right here. <laughs> Everything in being free from an attachment that has you overworking, what comes down to your choices, make good choices and you will manifest easily. Okay, and that the feeling of futility and working like crazy, your karma has been cleared from the past, but you still have that consciousness attachment to how you were taught to view yourself and money and its worth and its place in this world and in your life. So they are going to test you. So a difficult path is revealed has nothing to, like you've got really good money cards here, is nothing to do with whether or not you will have enough but it has to do with when you are given opportunities, will you continue to make good choices? And just be aware that like this is not to be menaced nor threatened, but honest to goodness, the only way to uh, keep yourself in a thriving energy is to keep yourself in a healthy energy. And it is an act of love on the part of your ancestors, your guides, your angels, your team. Rescue, like it. Education, got it. Protecting treasure, be careful, that is, this is a double-edged sword. You are protected, but this can also be the miser's attachment. Money is to make you happier, healthier, and safer in this world. And if it can, if you have enough of it to buy a great house, then great, but like evaluate your real needs to what will make you happier. And then I have field of dreams. So honest to goodness, you're in, um, it, and when I, when I say in a little bit of danger, I mean, the only danger lies in the ability to make sure that you continue to make healthy choices. That's all the only danger that you've got here. The danger in your life when it comes to your success and to making things happen and to having everything that you've been trying to manifest manifest 
is in the choices that you make in your approach to your work-life balance. They are, they, they are not trying to threaten you, but you do need to be aware that Raphael, because the need to overwork, because the need to exhaust yourself to try and meet a bottom line is based in fear, Raphael is the one that is blocking you and that is why you need to work on your heart chakra and you need to work on your inner dialogue because it's not difficulties in the form of like something trying to stop you. It is in the form of, it's gonna be a form of temptation for you when your life is taking off in your professional capacity is that don't abandon all of the things that you've worked on to have a better life, to have a happier life, to have a healthier life. And that like, again, without it being a threat, they want you to know you asked for this help, you asked for protection. If you've been invoking protection, remember it can take the form of like this, you're, you're not doing something that's good for you, you're hurting yourself. We are not on board for that. We will actually stop you, the eagle. From a strong foundation, you can build anything. But the energy of the tower, which has not been present in this particular reading, is that the premise is anything built on a faulty foundation must fall. If you build your success on overwork, overcommitment, and having no respect for your limitations or how you feel, then that is a faulty foundation. Build your success on, I like what I'm doing, I, I feel good in this, and when I don't feel good, I back off. Even if there are people ringing my doorbell, sending me letters, calling me up, going, I have the best opportunity for me, then you have to evaluate, is it right for me at this right time? Be prepared to be challenged in your ability to say no, and you need to know it's like this is happening soon. This is happening soon. And if a part of you starts hyperfixating on when, 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 then you know it's going to slow down again because that's an attachment energy. Just relax, breathe into it. And the way to make it happen is to have a very healthy routine around how you clear your energy, what you do in your downtime to make your life better. Don't just live to work and find the ways to be more connected in your world. Honest to goodness, don't pull yourself off balance and everything starts rolling. But it's like when a car has one wheel that's flattened, it does not travel well. It pulls to one side. It's a very dangerous journey. You have to keep all of your tires inflated. And one of those tires is about your personal life, your well-being, and how much you're enjoying your life. And even if it means saying no to lucrative opportunities. You have some tests coming up, and remember, they really are willing to slam on the brakes, not because they hate you, but because they love you. Okay, take care, be well. Welcome back. If you chose pile number two, this is your reading, putting the number two over there so that people can easily fast forward to their readings. Um, I believe this is the Mystical Moments Tarot. Uh, there's a Mystical Moral Moments Oracle. It is the exact same artist. There is a weird thing with this deck that I need to warn you about. It has double kings and double queens in it. So it's, and why did they do that? To um, differentiate between the divine masculine and the divine feminine. Um, we're going to pull an archangel card, to get, uh, archangel animal oracle card to start to see which archangel is helping with this. Uh, the last time I did this on the first pile, I got two. Here we go. Um, this is the same freaking archangel. Archangel. Luck <laughs> pee. Like I, I, I genuinely, I'm, no, I have no familiarity with this, but I know what the eagle symbolizes. It's about strong foundations. I think that there is going to be a recurrent message for every single pile, so I'm going to cover it up front. Which is remember that the opposite energy of the tower is this particular energy. The tower, anything built on a faulty foundation must fall, is saying that if you have started to pour a healthier foundation then the thing that will keep you in a successful energy and going forward will be maintaining healthy habits. And that if you stray from that, I swear to God, the last pile got this one as well. It's Raphael. Cat, I swear to you. Archangel Raphael, which is the opposite energy of fear. Archangel Raphael is in charge of your heart space, of the divine chakras. Um, love is the opposite energy of fear. When it comes to money and success, it is almost always... One of the things that can bring in a fear attachment, a jealousy attachment, a miser's attachment. So Archangel Raphael, you're getting the same warning the first pile did, which is um, if it comes out for the third one, it's going to be like, well, we're all needing to hear this. 
brakes will be slammed on when it comes to progress if you start being pulled out of a healthy work-life balance. And that is not to menace you, it is to help protect you. Let's get going with this. Um, what is this? Is it the Dream Keepers Tarot? It's the Dream Keepers Tarot. I beg your pardon. This is the Dream Keepers Tarot. It's a big deck. I like it though. Hey guys, before I get started, please don't forget to subscribe because it helps my channel. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you like the reading. If you want to book me for a private reading, there's a link to my website in the description box down below. It's the only way to book me. I have a podcast called Logical Magic, Examining Esoterica, where I discuss things like spirit attachments and you know, childhood trauma and magic, and it's esoterica. <laughs> Let's get going here. All right, so the archangels that are blessing this particular reading are the exact same ones as pile number one. And I wondered why I was kind of called to say that more than one pile is not likely to be appropriate. It may be because of that. We have the three wands in the upright, which is opportunity. That is the ship coming in card. I love this card for a business read. Opportunities will abound. Achievement will abound. Eight of Cups in the upright, which is going on a journey to seek more. Boy, I love this Eight of Cups. I don't use this deck very frequently when I'm reading clients because it's awkward to shuffle, but it has the most beautiful artwork. There are dragonflies, which are about light being added into your world. There are butterflies, which is about everything transforming. I have it with the Seven of Swords in the upright. Hey, listen, for me, this is most likely a strategy card but it is also the card of thievery, of lies, deceit, manipulation. Um, if you are in a creative field and you feel like other people are copying you sometimes, remember there's an old saying, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So just let it go. Like nobody else can be you. Even if somebody else is like, I am doing things very much like you, then they can't be you. So what works for you may not work for them and view it as a compliment, but it is also a strategy card. With the Knight of Wands in reverse, be careful. That is a card of frustration, sometimes being angered. Boy, that is a little bit of the message around here is that, <laughs> okay. Um, this one's interesting to me because I like the energy of success that is around this. Six of Wands in the Upright is literally a social media star car and making progress. That is what's supporting our opportunities. I have the Queen of Pentacles in the Upright. This is one of the best earthly energies that there is to have in a business reading. That is supporting the Eight of Cups, progress being made. Ten of Pentacles in reverse is a scheduling card for me. It is not one of the cards that has anything to do with financial deprivation. No strategy on your scheduling. Ah, Knight of Wands in reverse, which is a trigger card. Give me just one moment, please, with the Four of Swords in reverse, which is a card of taking action. Hey, this is the message that can get really difficult for people who have been in a long healing phase to hear, which is that sometimes there are still going to be challenges and that your ability to handle them is improving, but that life can't be a, like a, 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 a silent sea cruise with never a ripple in the water, it just can't. That every time you in, encounter something that seems to be triggering you, instead of reacting to it like, oh God, why don't you leave me alone? Please understand that they're helping you to increase your tolerance for triggers, which you won't be at the whim of anybody in a professional or a personal capacity when you can handle things that might frustrate you in a way that will serve you. Have a good process around recognizing, it's like, I might be a little triggered right now. And again, I kind of get the feeling that like, you're gonna feel like somebody's copying you. And that it could be a little bit triggering because it feels like somebody else trying to graft off of your success. In this particular field, I have a lot of readers who follow me. Um, in this particular field, we all have to deal with those scam accounts. And like the way that I deal with it is I make it very clear in everything I do. The only way to book me is through my website. If somebody's contacting you with WhatsApp numbers, that is a scammer. I don't even know if they give you a reading. I think they just take your money. Um, every single tarot reader out there has them. Everybody who is involved in social media has to deal with the cloned accounts. And the best way to deal with it is to just let it go and make it clear in all of your content that there is only one you. So be careful with that. 
And then that comes out with the world in the upright. And then the lovers in reverse, which is an interesting card because that's about making powerful choices and being whole and integrated within. The world is complete cycles. It is success. It is having it all as well. Um, I The only like little fly in the ointment here that I have to introduce to you is that like you might be like, when are they ever going to stop triggering me? When are they going to quit testing my limits to see how well I'm doing with it? I can recognize how much I've improved, but when does it stop? This is the hard part to hear. It doesn't really stop. It's just that you become so accustomed to it that it does not matter. Like you don't recognize it. Something that used to trigger you now just flies completely by you because you don't even recognize it as a trigger because you were desensitized to it. And that is the part that I need you to hear. If they trigger you over and over again, it is not that they are trying to beat up on you. It is that they are trying to desensitize you to milder forms of stress, which highly sensitive people are highly sensitive to difficulty and they have to build up a tolerance. They're helping you build up a tolerance when they do that. And like every time that you think, I wish something could just give me a hug and tell me I'm doing a good job, you're doing a great job. Try to view what they're doing with a slightly different eye, with a slightly different eye. That it's like, no, it's like strength training. They just keep increasing the weight a little bit and like now it's complete. If you used to curl 10 pounds on uh, bicep curls and now you cur curl over 20, remember there was a time that 10 pounds was tough. And that is what the tests do for us, is it increases our ability to just handle things. They're making you well. They're making you well. It's like they're your personal trainers. And like, <laughs> There's something I want you to know that is coming in from like your guides on this one because guides and archangels are not the same things. Archangels have never been human and they will never be human. Guides have been and will be, but it just distresses them so much that you think that they don't care about you when things are going wrong and trying to help you build that tolerance because it is an act of love and they just want you to reframe how you think about those challenges that are brought to you. Because far from being punishments, they are supposed to be the things that make life more comfortable for you. And please, you should be able to identify all the different ways in which things no longer phase you in the way that they used to. Here we go, let's keep going here. Let's get a fortune reading card here, or one or two. Let's go, what have we got for pile number two? Lots of good opportunities coming towards you. The tree, if there celebrations is on the back, by the way. Um, if there's a part of you that's like, when's it just going to be easy? When is my life going to be peaceful? When, it's not really going to get super peaceful. You are in charge of making your life more peaceful, which is in taking the right actions to keep yourself in balance. When you do feel frustrated, what do you do? You step away. Like working up ahead of steam only ever hurts you. People of good manifesting energy have big everything and they can get triggered. And honest to goodness, like I said, think of it as weight training and it should try to help a little bit. Wish your heart's desire is ready to come true with moon. Pay attention to your intuition at this time and move ahead confidently. Um, listen, snake, your intuition and healing powers will guide you to a better path, but be careful. You need to proceed with the idea that it's not, you're not weak. You're not weak, you're actually, if everything that you do is a challenge to you, it doesn't, and it's not to other people, it doesn't mean that you're weaker. It means that you're willing to go towards things that are difficult for you. Don't think of it as weakness. Think of it as strength because it's, you know, there, there is no courage without fear. If the things that you have to try and do scare the living crap out of you sometimes, think of yourself as brave, not why am I so scared by these ordinary things? Almost all of it has to do with having bigger everything. People who have big abilities have big vulnerabilities as well. Remember that. People with big abilities have big vulnerabilities as well. You see it in very successful people who become very egocentric. There's actually a vulnerability. Their entire view of self is tied up in being like, I can do it all, I'm right all the time. Easiest 
Easiest example of this is somebody like Elon Musk, who when he first made the scene, he did not seem like a raving lunatic. And these days he really does. And it's because he got caught very squarely in the land of ego. He does not have a lot of humility about himself. Have as much humility about yourself as you humanly can and recognize how you are being strong when you keep going, even though things are sometimes challenging. The love of your dragon reaches out to you. The realm of your truth is opening up to you. Um, by the way, please excuse my, I have a small cut on my hands. It always comes from doing magic. And then it's tear down the walls around your heart, give and receive security and warmth. So you got the Raphael card, which is always about working on your heart space. First pile got told to work on their heart space. Maybe as a collective, it's all, we're all in the heart space now. Yeah. This is a hard one because people who are very giving, people who are trying to make things happen, people who have these big energies, they sometimes want to give way too much to other people. And as they heal, sometimes as, they're, as we're establishing boundaries to help us with not being triggered, the actions that we take will help us with not being triggered. These are excellent cards in your outcomes. Um, we have to remember that like, you're not supposed to remain in a super, super guarded space. The queen, love and prosperity, that you are, like, risk being vulnerable sometimes because you're more resilient than you give yourself credit for being. And it doesn't mean that everybody you meet is gonna knock into the mud and take your lunch money. What it means that if they tried is like half the time now you just nail them square on the slats, get up and go, you shouldn't have done that and move right on. And remember, you're a, when you're willing to work with your vulnerabilities to make yourself stronger by going towards things that are difficult for you, you gain in all of the ways that you can. Serendipity, bright new prospects are on the horizon. Ooh, who are you? The Caduceus, you will receive news from afar. This is one of those words that I have, like, <laughs> I've only ever seen it in writing, so God knows if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And if I'm not, please forgive me. You have a lot of opportunities coming towards you. Some of them will be triggering. Some of them will be challenging. Some of them will be, you know, I almost want to use the word difficult. But it's not because you're going to have a difficult life. When those things are happening, Try to take the perspective of like, wow, as little as a year ago, I would not have done well with that. I'm really improving. Like I said, they, they know that I, I like, I have like, I, I almost want to say a bunch of fretful guides here right now. We're like, make sure they understand. Make sure that you understand that the challenges that are brought to you are not because they don't care, but because they will do almost anything, including risking your permanent displeasure and dislike of them to make you happier and stronger. And even if it feels like, you know, I get up every day and where's it coming from today? Eventually what will happen is that you won't feel that way about it. You'll just be like, that is the nature of life and it does not impact me and I'm fine. And that's what the goal is here. When it comes to money and career, you have a lot coming to you. You need to be careful. You need to be a little less guarded with people. Please don't overschedule yourself. This is this part's bugging me. Between the like somebody's gonna copy you, it might be triggering. Do not overschedule yourself. The ways to make your life cushy and pleasant and opulent are coming. You do not need to hyper focus on what's my bottom line this week what's my bottom what when am, I, when am I gonna be making this amount of money if I do this then I'll be able to move at this time and everything will come to you when it's meant to release that to the guides that you have invoked the angels that you have invoked knowing that they will they, they there is worth in our discomfort because eventually we become desensitized to discomfort and when that happens then we're not in a vulnerable position. When you've wanted success for a really long time and it comes to you, if you have not worked up that ability to shake it off, shake it off, it, it, you're, you're in a different form of very vulnerable condition. If this has gone on a long time, and for a lot of people it does because they have a hard time incorporating this message, we resist this message because they're like, oh no, you're wrong, I'll be so happy when I have enough. Yes, but it would be temporary if it could not withstand the stress of challenges and of triggers, which is just a part of being a feeling being. If you want the big happy, 
you have to understand that sometimes it's going to mean that you have to take very good care of the big mad, the big sad, the big hurt. Okay, if you have the big everything, it comes in all areas. And life will continue to change challenges because it's meant to. It's meant to. When I see people talk about the law of attraction and they just think that everything is going to be so beautiful and so easy, it's like you do get realize that it would become nothing after a while. It would just be your normal state and your unhappiness would return. That they are trying to invoke a very fleeting form of unhappiness, of happiness, because the, everything exists in the, in the contrast. Meaning you know you're happy when it's different from your state of being on the day-to-day -day basis. And you can be happy for long periods of time, but there will be times to grieve, there will be times to be happy, there will be times to struggle, there will be times to glide. Life, the worth of it, the resonant joy of being alive exists in our ability to feel and to be able to handle things and to have those big emotions. And so like a time of happiness is coming. <laughs> Like everything's ready to be online for you. The only reason you're getting this message is that I think there is a part of you, according to this reading, that doesn't understand this. So why, why all these triggers? Why all these challenges? Why do these things that are like coming at me every day, why won't they go away? When's it going to stop? It doesn't stop. What does stop is your feeling of sensitivity to it. All right, we have Shemuel, the third chakra archangel Shemuel. Well, a different archangel decided to come in, which is about personal power. Stop worrying about a life that contains challenges and start saying, I'm powerful enough to handle, I'm so powerful, I can handle my challenges. And when you feel that way, like I said, it becomes this, you know, the weight that you used to struggle to heft is now the thing that you're able to do with ease. The door to spirit, which is a meditation energy, the thinking man, which is, you know, logical processes on everything. Um, hey, if you're not aware of that part, um, please do uh, kind of consider it. Is that everything that is troubling you sometimes in your emotions, you do not need to repress it. You have to allow yourself to feel a feeling. Don't be afraid of them. They're not permanent. They come, they go. Even if you end up sobbing your guts out, you'll be, you'll be okay a half hour later if it's about a frustration. Letting your feelings out in a way that is healthy, understanding them. And the easiest way is to talk yourself through things logically. Everything that I'm telling you about the challenges that have been brought to you that I think of, like, there's a lot of frustration in this. They're there to help desensitize you so that you're not a raw nerve in this world. Because when we are, we're at other people's whims. They have way too much power over us. Even those like scam artists that seem to be there. Um, like uh, <laughs> you have to remember, it really is a marker of your success that somebody else is trying, trying to just take it away from you and trying to graft off of you. But you live in this very, very safe energy. They're just trying to help you find joy even though the world can never be without its own challenges. Um, invoke Raphael, work on your heart space. Try to reframe how you're thinking about triggers and understand that like honest to goodness, everything they do has a reason. Everything they do has a purpose. If it takes longer, it's like, well, maybe it's just the depth of the wound. And that can be a really hard one because it's like, well, I didn't wound myself. Why do I get stuck with healing it? Because that's what everybody gets stuck with, you know? Um, this is a card of great success. This is a card of being whole and integrated within. This is a card of learning how to actively deal with your frustration in a way that will fuel your success. But it lies in your choices. More is coming to you. The Eight of Cups is you're going on towards more in an earthly capacity in terms of success. Be careful. This is a strategy card. It really is. It's also a card of temporary situations. It also, in this particular one, is depicting a snake-like figure. And remember, you got the snake card as well. Snakes are not evil. They don't just mean attachments. Snakes shed their skin and begin again. The frustrations of life never stop because it's just part of being alive. Being able to shed them and leave them at the door and like being like, even if that was just an impossible hour out of my life, it's over now. Those are the things that you're working towards on this. And for money and career, 
Um, before you know it, there's going to be, and I, like sincerely, there's a very fast moving energy with all of these. You had the three of wands at the very beginning of this. Remember, wands are the quickest energy in all of the tarot. They're about fire. They're about things happening. Things are happening. They are happening right now. If you feel like it has taken forever, it's like, well, you know, maybe you just have a lot to heal. That's not an issue of being weak, particularly because I deal with so many abuse survivors. Um, like energy attracts like energy. I'm an abuse survivor. If you keep thinking that you're weak because you're not healed yet, I need you to remember that like a, addiction is almost always a trauma response. There are so many examples of people who did not overcome their trauma through no fault of their own. Frequently, they didn't have the right access to support. This is not about judgment. It's about reframe how you think about the pace of your healing journey to understand that if something has been slowing things down so you have to focus on yourself or bringing you new challenges so that you have to build up your tolerance, it is because something is helping you and that you are doing very well indeed. If you have very deep trauma that has taken potentially years to heal, then understand what a strong, strong, strong person you are to have not fallen backwards. Because for every single time a client says to me, I didn't have any choice, they did. They did. As the streets of every major city prove, we are, there is a pitfall that sucks up the hurt and the injured. Addiction is a disease of despair. There are many people who get sucked into that pit, into that void. And if you didn't, and it's taking a while to heal, it is because you are incredibly strong and you can keep going. And that is not to say people who are suffering from addiction are weak. Again, without support, without help, without care, it's very difficult to heal. Everything that's being brought to you is to help you heal and handle and thrive in your life, okay? Success is right around the corner for you. Watch your choices, invoke protection, work on your heart chakra, and remember that is always the energy that will help you with business. Even though it seems counterintuitive, Raphael is the archangel that helps you the most with business because Raphael is divine love and that is the opposite energy of fear. Everything having to do with trying so hard to make money in this world, trying to hold it up like a shield to ward off all forms of evil is fear-based. Raphael and the heart chakra is the best thing that you can do to heal, to help your business, to help your career, okay? Take care, be well, that was your message. Welcome back. If you just found number three, then this is your reading. We're putting number three over there so people can easily fast forward to it, but there are always timestamps in the description box down below. One of the things we're going to get here is an Archangel card. It's from the Animal Oracle. Uh, spoiler alert, the first two piles got the exact same two cards, and it's weird when I put them back in the deck, I separated them, so they really wanted in. Let's see what you guys get instead. The Guardian of the Night Tarot is going to be the one bringing you a predictive card. Let's get your Archangel card or cards. I took two on the first two piles, so I'll probably take two on this as well. What's coming up in Money and Career for pile number three? Hey guys, please don't forget to do things like subscribe. It helps my channel. If you like the reading, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. If you want to book me for a private reading, the only way to do that is through my website, atherisingmoon.com. There's a link in the description box down below. We have the goat card, greatest of all time. Act from your innate wisdom. It's Archangel. This is, this is why I've been getting um, an extra card, is that there are so many archangels. I work with the core four, and so these are always related to one. This should be related to um, either Raphael or Michael, because is the god of nature. Archangel, who knows how to pronounce this, Perlmoyek, and Pan, um, which is the god of nature. Those are the cards that are related to the elements as well. Um, Goats are about determination in the tarot. The, the rams, um, in, if they're symbolized in the tarot, are about our confidence and determination. Um, goats are also, it's interesting because they're one of the Chinese astrological figures as well. Um, determination really is something that is the key to your success, which is you may have been being in a cycle where you've been taught to persevere. It's the least fun cycle of our personal growth, 
But it's the necessary one because we have to be able to build the confidence in our abilities through that adversity and being able to handle the challenges. Um, that comes out with donkey, archangels, Mary, and Gabriel. That's interesting. I'm attached to the archangel Gabriel. You've got different cards, by the way. Keep your heart open no matter what. Um, being guarded is an important thing. Hey, I'm turning on another light here because I turned it off for a client. And I'm turning it back on here. It is interesting that one of the things that can help us in business, it seems a little bit counterintuitive, and it is actually working on your heart space. Because fear is the opposite energy of love, and when it comes to persevering and being able to have the determination and the willpower to keep pushing forward, um, the thing that keeps us from doing that is fear that our efforts are futile or that we're failing. And so the thing to work on is actually the heart chakra. And it doesn't get talked about enough in, in business circles about, well, what helps you succeed? is making sure that you have a clear and an open and a compassionate heart space because it will help rule. Oh my goodness, it's the card of fear. Nine of Swords in the upright is the first card out. Interesting. Uh, that is fear. That is being plagued by it as well. Um, you really genuinely need to connect with nature when you get this goat card as well. And then the donkey. Um, hey, I don't know if you've noticed, but you just got two cards right in a row of like, stubbornness like being able to remember stubbornness is just willpower that took a slightly wrong turn if you're super duper stubborn you actually have willpower and always go towards willpower rather than stubbornness and what is stubbornness stubbornness is when you can't hear another person's point of view because we all sometimes need to make changes so willpower is like one of the things that helps us manifest things stubbornness is a rigid energy so make sure that you're working on releasing ties to outcomes as well try maybe a cord cutter um, we have the empress in reverse which is one of the cards for i almost exclusively see this as innovative solutions of thinking outside the box of creating the things that you want rather than you have been told to want, as a for instance. If you're, hmm, things are coming to you in a different way than you envisioned, but that doesn't make them a lesser form, okay? With the Wheel of Fortune in reverse, which is learning how to let things go, and then we have the Six of Swords in reverse, which is also a card of closure, bringing something to a close, is the card of, I, I almost want to say making amends as well. The Wheel of Fortune in reverse in this particular context is not a bad one. Um, the karmic cards in reverse are about the start of new cycles. And the karmic cards, one of them is the Wheel of Fortune, the other one is a world. The judgment card is also a karmic card. Where they're in reverse like that, it's, you are... <clears throat> Hey, so pile number three, one of the things that holds you back is you get hyper-focused on things and just do some work on releasing your att attachment outcomes. Because sometimes, like, our guides have to learn how to work around our, attach our rigidity, our attachment to outcomes. Do some work on it. Eight of Wands in the upright is progress, swiftness going forward. Things are going to start moving. They are moving already. With the sun in reverse... Sun in reverse, the sun in the upright and the sun in reverse are both very positive cards. Um, the sun in reverse is again about new cycles beginning. I, I like this. Hey, this spring, early spring is like gonna be a very, very fruitful time for you. Hmm. You're gonna need to work on your fear. Some of it will involve some root chakra work as well. It's held you back, and sometimes it's made you make decisions that didn't necessarily serve you. So keep that part in mind. The Magician in reverse, and then I've got the Two of Pentacles in the upright, which is everything in a balanced state, all ends being met. The Magician in reverse can be about... Oh, oh, this is an important one. All karmic curses have been released. And why did you have karmic curses? Was it something that you did? No, they're generational usually. But they have all been released. I think you wonder about that sometimes if like maybe there's like something holding you back. Um, the two of pentacles, like everything being in a balanced state, like your needs always being met, making all ends meet. Um, that's like something that will be back in your life very soon. Like your, your, your balance sheet is going to be coming out in the black again. If it has been in the red for a while, it won't stay that way. Ace of swords in reverse with seven of wands in the upright. 
Hey, listen, the only thing that you need to be aware of is that you struggle against your messages sometimes. I actually like the energy that is on this particular deck because there is progress, there is balance, there is like something being put to rights as well. And there's like, as the growing season returns, like there's momentum being gained with that Eight of Wands as well. But you need to pay attention. We've got on this particular one, we have, is that a hawk? This is a hawk. Um, hawks are really about like, uh, it's, it's weird because the different birds of prey have different meanings. And like, it's usually they're about friendship and loyalty and tenacity as well. This is an interesting read and slightly different than the other piles got, but not in a bad way. I, this is gonna, oh boy, this is gonna be a popular one. Hey, um, release the idea that you always know best. Like, try to listen to your guidance a little bit more. If you're being told over and over again, dude, you need to rest more than you do. Quit saying, I look at my bank account and I am not allowed to rest. You do not need to earn rest. You're like, you have to take it. It keeps you out of balance when you won't. Um, you're, you have a varied pace coming up, but in a good way. In a good way. Like, things are really going to take off, and there is a lot of progress being made. But you have to remember that your personal energy is depleted. Um, kind of easily, because you put a lot into absolutely everything that you do. And you just are being asked to, like, you know, maybe do some attachment removal work. Cord cutters help. Sound Energy Alchemist is one of my favorite ones. They have some very good protective shielding energy. Um, this pile should be somebody who's like, hmm, you're very comfortable with the idea of manifestation and magic, but you're a little bit, I want to say frustrated, um, with the pace of things. This is a comment that you need to hear and consider without thinking it's a judgment. If you have traditionally powered through on things and it's like they won't let anything happen, it is because that's the part of yourself that is made of the stubbornness. Like sometimes being the person who it's like, even though I feel half dead, I need to get this done. Unless somebody is on a table in need of a vital organ transplant, pretty much everything can wait. Do things as you're able to. You might keep setting your progress back because you push hard. Um, we have Sun. Open your heart to the enormous growth ahead. Fool. Uh, have courage to embrace change. Take risks. Be adventurous. That is something I want to talk to you about. Death, a time of natural transition and transformation. And then we've got birth, universal energy. I take, I'm taking more on your cards because this is a slightly confusing pile, but in a good way. Um, your outcomes keep being concealed from you because you will t use every ounce of your energy to try and make them happen when they are given to you. And you don't understand or you can't accept that that forms a barrier. And so they had to get a little bit with the innovative solution. They had to get a little bit crafty around like not giving you the info that you keep asking for sometimes. Because even when you don't want to, you're like, oh, okay, something's happening in February. You're on alert for February and you like, you put all of your energy in trying to manifest your outcomes. And what you need to do is put your energy into having a happy and a healthy life and everything else will happen for you. And you're having trouble with that. And it may be because you like, as for instance, um, I was just talking to a client because like my mother is actually from a different country. She's from Scotland. Um, and there's a lot of economic deprivation there. And I had to do a ton of work to remove what amounts to like a miser's attachment on that. Even though I've always been a very generous person, um, I, get, I can get very fear centric around money. And I had to do a ton of work and I will almost always have to do some work around that on a regular basis. And it seems like you have some attachments of your own to address when it comes to that. Because you, as much as you try to go with the flow, uh, you have a hard time with it. You have a hard time with it. Um, 
try to live your day, your life in a, you know, one day at a time energy and try to embrace the idea that like, no, I can trust these beings in my life. I can trust my guidance. And I don't have everything I want right now. It's because like, maybe I wasn't ready for it. Maybe I wasn't wanting the right things. Maybe the thing that's going to bring me the greatest success, this growth and take risk, involves me like stepping out and doing a new thing. Like it, <laughs> if you are change averse, the universe will bring you a bunch of change until you're comfortable with it. If you are risk averse, the universe will bring you like uncertain times so that you eventually exhaust the energy of being concerned and are just like, I have to relax because I don't have an ounce of energy to dedicate to that. What this card draw is about is like reassurance around everything that the Seven of Wands, please remember in the Seven of Wands, like the high ground is being achieved. This particular figure is always the, like always coming out on top. You will always come out on top even if it doesn't feel that way. You should be able to look at your life even if it's like, even in bad circumstances, I have had good outcomes or the best outcomes that are available to me. Like trust in the idea that you're more of a, you know, I always land on my feet person than you think you are. Because it's your lack of faith in yourself to do that that sometimes holds you back. But the Eight of Wands is all about progress and movement forward. And the Two of Pentacles, again, everything's being made right in your life. But you, you, are, you have a hard time trusting it, that it will be. That you're like, okay, I'll trust. And then nothing materializes in the time frame that you think it should. And so your trust starts to evaporate. And the thing that you're, it's not about trust in your guides. It's really about trusting yourself. They're bringing a difficult energy to, end, to an end in your life. And it's happening soon. Um, but they want you to remember that putting the bit between your teeth and trying to run forward to your own detriment, it, that's not success. If you're exhausted, if you're irritable, if you're cranky, if you always feel like the, you know, I never feel rested, I never have enough energy, it's because you're trying to do too much. And they do, like they get that it frustrates you tremendously, but they will continue to block you until you live in a healthier energy. Lovable. I am lovable and worthy of love. I set my intentions to open my heart. And we've got some advice on uh, working on your heart chakra. Accepting all love and compassion that comes my way. I will find my people, the people who love and accept me for who I am. I know I only need to discover them. Boundaries. Healthy boundaries keep my energy safe and allow me to live as my truest self. I deserve people in my life who love and care about me, my limits and comforts, so they would, they, those who respect my boundaries will receive my time. Hey, you need to respect your boundaries just a little bit more. That's all. Um, listen, like I, I've, I've lifted weights almost my entire life. I'm a mid-lifter, so, um, which is something that's been important to me. Um, and every now and then I have to increase resistance. But not everything has to be about pushing yourself, okay? If you're a person who's pushed yourself a great deal, because there's just a little bit, I want to say uh, there's a lot of determination in those two wrath, in those two archangel cards, but sometimes that determination puts how you feel with the sun in reverse last when it needs to be something that you have respect for. Because ignoring how, oh, <gasps> emotions, ignoring how you feel has gotten you into trouble in the past. It's great that you keep trying to expand your maybe stamina or ability. Um, don't push as hard as you do. Just don't push as hard as you do. Everything is coming and it's coming in the time it's meant to. And the thing that is slowing it down is the fact that you have trouble respecting your limitations. And it creates a concern around giving you too much because you'll try and do too much. So please just learn, learn to go with your flow 
of how you feel and respecting it as much as you can, okay? Emotions, I'm a human being that has emotions. Feeling is a part of life and negative emotions that I encounter are welcome. However, I will simply acknowledge them and let them pass. I will not hold on to the, these thoughts, but intentionally release them as they come. That is very, very, very important. For people who push through, they have a tendency to push down, okay? And if you push down your emotions, they don't get resolved, they don't get released, they get ignored. And so they build up, it's almost like, like a toddler trying to get your attention or something. That if you're trying to, I don't like how that feels so I won't feel it, I will just keep pushing through. Your, your determination is sometimes something that holds back your success. Even though we're taught that it fuels success almost exclusively, it can actually get in the way of things because you might have trouble hearing this, but your life is actually here to be enjoyed every single day because that's all we get every single day is that day. If you work yourself to a frazzled state on the days that you are working, then you're exhausted on the days that you're not. Respect your limits just a little bit more because everything that you need will always come to you. And if it doesn't feel that way right now, they may have been trying to help you release an overfocus on money, which happens. It happens. We have the griffin, honor and good luck. Uh, the wolf, beware who you trust. The, dark, the raven, darkness rooms on the horizon. The chalice, rejuvenation and fulfillment. Now, the beware who you trust energy, like, that's always going to be in, in business. Like, you have to be aware of that. Like, not every opportunity. People who are in business, they, you know, we have to be very cognizant of the quality of the um, opportunities that come to us as to whether or not they really serve a path or whether or not they're more designed to lead us down a path that doesn't contain much fulfillment for us. When we talk about these attachment energies, and I don't have an active attachment, I have a, I have a predisposition towards uh, working too hard. I have a predisposition towards ignoring how you feel in order to go and try. And please remember, a society that is not particularly well balanced taught you that that's acceptable. And it's not. You're allowed to have limitations. You're allowed to need to rest, even if it means that you're not being super, you don't have to be productive every moment of your life. And if you need a rest, take a rest. It, it won't set you back, it doesn't work that way. You're not gonna lose an opportunity. If anything, what happens is, with this energy of, I will push on through to daylight that is all over this, um, is that when you build that success, like your health will crash so hard that like it won't really be success. If something is breaking you, it's that's not what success is. If something is causing you to feel like you're giving a pint of blood every day, that's not success. Sometimes we really do have to, like when I was talking about strength training and you know increasing resistance, sometimes we have to push ourselves to see what our limits are, but respect them. Rise above the dark days of life. Do not fight them, but have faith that the light will always return. Have the courage to be free. Know that freedom begins where desire ends. And we want one more on this. You are unique. Be brave. A little crazy, but be yourself. So what is this really talking about with the courage to be free? Please, 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 please listen to this. Because the, the energy that I've got in here is somebody who will literally hurt themselves trying to make things happen. And your guides will never help you with that. They, like, even if you think, that's what I want, that's what I want. The desire energy, what we desire is not always what is best for us. It's what we've been told to want sometimes. It's what this world decides to prize over, like, having a resonant experience. It is better to scale back in what you think you want and feel better in your life. Now, all of this sounds like, like, well, does that mean I'm not going to succeed? No, apparently you're going to succeed just fine. It's just that you're not thinking about success in a way that it will make your life better. And you are receiving a warning around treat yourself properly. Treat yourself properly because if you will not treat yourself properly, you will always, that wolf, beware who you trust, 
Accept people into your life who also ignore your needs. If you ignore your needs, um, listen, hey, let's revisit something really quickly. You're going to succeed. It's happening soon. Be careful with your choices. Don't push yourself too hard. But you have more information here that is a little bit important, is that you will put yourself into a state of unbalance because you are somebody who likes to push through. And that is ignoring your needs. And if this describes you, please consider it as something to mull over. If you ignore your needs, if you resent them, if you think it's weak to need rest rather than an indication of, I just must need rest, um, the people that you allow into your life are never going to treat you better than you treat yourself. The people you allow into your life will not treat you better than you treat yourself. Success is happiness as well. Please don't push yourself to the point that you're breaking. Present power. Increase. I knew that part already. Hidden motivations. Be careful. A creative endeavor. Hey, a little bit of a watch out, because the hidden motivation is not like, I'm not getting a bad actor on this. I'm not going to be careful. Someone's coming along to steer your ideas. What I am getting is that you press things down too much in order to keep going on. You ignore feelings of uh, fatigue. You ignore feelings of hunger. You ignore, I'm tired and I don't want to do this. I feel depleted. I don't feel encouraged. You ignore those things. And then there is something in these cards that suggests that like you avoid other human beings because like, you, like I said, if you're not treating yourself properly, it, Respect your boundaries. Respect your own boundaries, and the people who will respect your boundaries will come along as well. And we've got two of the most stubborn animals on Earth, the donkey and the goat, over there telling you that determination to push past your limits is only helpful when you're trying to recover from something and gain strength. And then you know what you need in weightlifting is you need rest days. And... Um, it's essential to actual fitness. We need our recovery time. That's our six of swords in the upright. Please respect your need for recovery time. Um, I swear, like, there's nothing new for you in this message about success. Like, you've been told over and over again, you're going to succeed. Things, Everything is coming to you. And the energy of, like, well, where is it then is all over this. And here's where it is. It is waiting for you to treat yourself as if you matter more than money. Please hear that part. Treat yourself like you matter more than money. Hey, uh, excuse my giant arm reaching across here. This is a very, very interesting deck that I have not used in a public reading yet, but I've been using in daily draws. And I just kind of felt like this is the right deck for this. So listen, you're going to succeed, and it's waiting solely on the please treat yourself like you flipping matter. Like part of the reason that you're trying to succeed is not so that you can retire when you're 80 to a beautiful villa, but rather to enjoy every single day of your life. Treat yourself like your feelings matter as much as your bottom line. And like more opportunities coming to you, but you, you, you don't treat yourself right sometimes. And that is the piece of information that you needed to be the last building block in the what is real success for me. Patience. You're being asked to practice patience right now. It's not easy to do this, but you're strong, and there's a reason why things aren't aligning in the way you want them to in this moment. Have patience. It will eventually work out. Listen. <laughs> you're being asked to listen to your inner voice. It's been guiding you to do something or say something. It's time to act on its wisdom. We're going to take one more on this with pay attention. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, like the uh, nail, head, hammer over and over again. You don't treat yourself well sometimes. You resent your limitations rather than care for them. Be kinder to you. It's more important than money. You are going to succeed, but you are having a really, really hard time understanding that your success is held up sometimes because you don't treat yourself like your feelings matter. And that's what you're trying to heal. Work on your heart space. Work on having fun just to have fun. 
even if it means goofing off more than you're supposed to or you think you're supposed to sometimes. More's coming to you, the spring's super, super active there. And you are at risk of doing that thing, putting the bit between your teeth and just going and going and going and ignoring, I'm tired, I'm depressed, I'm anxious. Every time that you have that feeling, it is a call to take care of you and to prioritize your well-being instead of your bank account. And that's just what you need to hear. You are going to succeed. The only thing that is holding you back is that you won't treat yourself with respect. Respect for your limitations, respect for your health, respect for your emotional well-being. You try to stuff your feelings down and do the work to like kind of get in touch with them. Talk about how you're feeling to yourself. If you have to do it out loud to like get used to that, then do that. Um, do it into voice memo. I tell my clients that all the time. Pile number three, that was a super, super interesting message because like the whole darkness looms on the horizon thing. Um, I don't think it's an external force. I think you have like resisted this. I think you've heard it a lot. You get depressed when you're depleted. It makes you sad. It makes you sad. And that brings on your personal darkness. Treat yourself like you matter and have some fun. And know that patience, listen, pay attention, you're going to succeed. It's just coming to you in a time where it will make you happy versus exhaust you. And you have to learn not to exhaust yourself because that's not success. That is serving, I almost want to say a lower master, okay? Take care, be well.